Hello and welcome back everyone to this webinar series on applications of remote sensing based evapotranspiration data products for agricultural and water resources management. This is the third and last session today. Earlier we had overview of open ET data and Ecostas ET data. Today we will focus on exercises uh, where you will have chance to work with these two websites uh, to access and download uh, EcoStress and OpenET uh, vapotranspiration data. Just one point to note here, homework is posted on our set website and answers must be submitted via Google form. The links are available here. The homework is due on June 29th. After the uh, webinar is completed, you will receive a certificate of completion if you submit the homework by the deadline and also if you have attended all three live sessions. So what we're going to do is we will have very brief summary of what we saw, some main features about OpenET and EcoStress ET. Then we will have some uh, review of unit conversion of EcoStress ET. As you recall, EcoStress ET uh, data are available in watts per meter square and open ET available in millimeters per day. So what we're going to do is see how one, how watts per meter can, can be converted to millimeter per day evapotranspiration. Then I will demonstrate both these sites, OpenET and Appear site, um, and we will have step-by-step -step exercises where you can go through these sites, uh, choose some areas or points, and access data, download it, um, visualize time series. It's not involved as what we saw last week from Gregory Halverson. Uh, it's not. Uh, very heavy on analysis. It's mostly so that you get experience and you can navigate through these websites and look at um, the data sets. It's just so that you get feel for how to use this data. So in future, if you are looking for detailed analysis, at least you know how to navigate through these websites and download data. So to summarize our overview and access of OpenET uh, data that we saw in week one, um, OpenET is calculated using remote sensing data and six different models. So on the website, ensemble mean ET values are available and also ET data from individual models are available on the site. Um, these data are available over the Western US. Uh, the special resolution is 30 meter. Currently the data are available on monthly basis and Annual cumulative data are also available. Uh, they are producing daily data and it, they will be available in near future, as we heard from Forrest Melton in week one. OpenET will be extended to cover the entire US in near future as well. And there are efforts underway to expand this data internationally. As we will see, potential ET and graded precipitation data are also included along with ET data on the open ET portal. As for EcoStress ET, that is calculated using EcoStress surface temperature and emissivity data, so based on energy balance, and it uses Prisley Taylor Jet Propulsion Laboratory algorithm. The reference is given here. So PT, JPL, ET data are global uh, coming from EcoStress and they are available at 70 meter resolution. Daily ET estimates and evaporative stress are available from appears as well as instantaneous ET is also available. Both OpenET and EcoStress ET data are validated by using the eddy covariance technique at FluxNet sites and the reference is given here. For the PT-JPL um, ET algorithm, here is the reference where it is described in detail. So next, let's see how to convert watts per meter square to millimeter per day. So PT-JPL EcoStress ET um, is in watts per meter square, which is uh, energy that is used for uh, evapotranspiration of water. 
So per day, there are 86,400 seconds. One watt is one joule per second. So it's, it's really rate of energy joule per second. Um, so one watt per meter square is 86,400 joules per day. Per, this is for meter square now, per unit area. As we know, density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. And latent heat energy of evaporation is 2.45 to 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram of water. This is at actually 20 degrees Celsius temperature. So this has temperature dependence, but it is more or less 2.45 to 2.5 megajoules per kilogram. And this is the energy needed to evaporate one kilogram of water Based on this density, we can say that one kilogram per water would be a volume of 0 0.001 meter cube, or it is one millimeter of water depth over meter square of area. So that's the conversion that we use. So for 2.45 10 to the 6 joules energy is required to evaporate one millimeter of water. So in millimeter per day per meter square, if we want to convert watts per meter square to millimeter per day, you will first convert that watts to um, joules uh, per day. And then it is this in, in energy, uh, joules required to evaporate water uh, of this volume or this depth. So when you work through this factor, you get evapotranspiration in uh, millimeters per day. And you can look at uh, this document here from FAO. Uh, it describes how this conversion is done. So with that, what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate quickly open ET site as well as appear site, which you have already seen, but we're going to focus on specific regions and see what the information is available, how to download, and then there will be step-by-step -step exercise that you will have time to work on. Uh, we will stay online so you can work with the data. And then at the end of that, uh, we will have question answer session as usual. Some of your homework questions are based on the exercises that you will be doing today. So um, if you cannot finish the exercise during this time, uh, you can take uh, this week or next two weeks to work on those exercises and then do the homework. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go to OpenET website first. So start with the OpenET data portal that we saw in week one. And let's walk through this explore data link. Go through explore data. And you will see field summaries and graded data. Let's start with field summaries so we can see individual fields. Here's the Western US where the data are available in inches. You can let's Look at the SI unit, so convert it to millimeters. So here's the scale. Uh, let's turn the cities on so we can see where we are. Here is the select year. You can select from 2016 to 2021. Let's keep 2021 for now. Uh, variable is ET. You can have raster view or field view. Let's just have field view for now. And what we can do is now zoom in and pick a field where we are interested in. So, for example, let's look at, this is Kansas, where a lot of wheat and other crops grow. So let's focus in here, zoom in. When you go to about 13 or 14 zoom factor here, you will see that you can see individual fields. And when you click on any of this field, it shows the field boundary and the graph appears on the right-hand side, if you can see. Um, it shows on top 
total accumulated ET for the year for this field. Area of the field in hectares, uh, it has a crop type. Here it is corn and soybean. Uh, y axis shows ET in millimeter and X axis shows month. So you can see monthly ET for this particular field. This is for 2021 because that's the one we chose. When you move here, the graph changes as you can see and it shows uh, the same information, total ET area and the time series for this particular year. You can see what the range of ET is for all these fields. And here you can see this is miscellaneous annual crop. This is miscellaneous annual crop. Here is corn and soybean. So you can see what kind of crops and what evaporation, evapotranspiration is occurring this year. When you click on any of these fields, say let's click here, it works through uh, all data from 2016 to present and provides time series of ensemble mean ET based on these models. And range that is found in these models, you can check that by uh, clicking here on range. Note here that the about crop type and area and field ID are given here. Also note that the region we focused on that center led to longitude, not of the field, but the area that we are in, that's given here. This is the longitude, this is latitude. Uh, you can look at PTJPL, it's here, and it comes up. You can look at all the models if you like. That decides what range is there. When you go through this, it shows value for this particular month for this field from a model and ensemble mean. So you can click on download data and you can download images in JPEG or PNG format or as CSV file. Uh, the time series can be downloaded as PDF document or SVG vector image. You can look at cumulative data, uh, annually cumulative data. It, uh, it shows for each year and each month as it progresses. And when you go here for each month, it lists um, cumulative evapotranspiration. This can also be downloaded the same way. Note also that there are additional variables. ET0 is the reference ET that you can plot. Now for monthly also, you can look at uh, additional variables such as ET0. And this is a reference ET and NDVI also can be seen. So what you want to do is maybe turn other plots off and look at NDVI and ET0. So, so that contributes to ET and that you can see here. ET fraction is uh, from each of this is basically uh, fraction is the realized fraction of reference ET that actually evapotranspirated. So that's the, um, that's, uh, that's the fraction of ET that you can see. So what was the actually potential and then how much actually evapotranspiration occurred. So this is how basically you navigate through this and download data. Then you can um, then work with other hydrologic component for each month, if you like, for this particular field or this area. Let's go back to explore data and look at the gridded data. And I'm just going to randomly zoom into some area. Here I want to show the feature draw custom area. Here also let's turn the cities on and change the units to millimeter. Here we can look at 2021. And let's draw a rectangle. Notice that if I make a big rectangle, 
it tells me area selected is larger than 1000 hectare. So the limit here is 1000 hectare. So the data you choose, the polygon should be less than 1000 hectares for graded data. So let's look at this area and run time series. Again, you will see that this is monthly data, this time series, then you can also look at cumulative data. It's the same, but now for gridded data, and now you have not just one field, but um, area which is less than 1,000 hectare of your interest. It could be your watershed, it could be your uh, local municipality or you know, where uh, water has to be managed, you can pick that area. One thing to note here is that the polygon, polygon that you, you draw, either um, polygon or rectangle, whatever you draw, you can save those coordinates on clipboard. So important thing is that you save those and it, it gets copied onto a clipboard and everything else is the same. You can download and look at other things. Now look at the additional variable. Here, in addition to reference ET and NDVI, you also have precipitation data available from GridMet. And so this, this particular area, precipitation also is shown in millimeter and ET. Uh, you can see how the phase is different between max precipitation and ET and how they vary. So you can actually take difference and see for each month where uh, precipitation minus evapotranspiration, how it changes. If you save it as CSV file, you can take that difference and see um, water deficit or water um, excess for this particular month for this year. So, so this is just the basic navigating through OpenET data, looking at it and downloading it. Uh, your first exercise has two parts. That will cover field level ET access as well as uh, choosing an area. Uh, you can choose area of your own interest, although it guides you through. Look at Nebraska and California. But basically, you will be going through the similar processes and, and note how the, if ET varies from month to month, year to year, with crop types, with region, you can analyze this just visually. So now let's go to EcoStress ET. To access EcoStress ET, we saw last week that we use the Appears website. So once you go there, uh, sign in with NASA Earth Data username and password. Once you do that, you can access data and download data. You can explore. Here, let's extract data. Last week, Gregory Halverson showed how to extract area data and analyze it because it's in geotiff. You can make time series. You can uh, plot data, make averages. Uh, here, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use points uh, because that's easy to analyze now uh, without help of, say, QGIS at this point. But it gives you some idea of how to go to uh, this website and get data. So let's pick point. Once you pick that, you can start a new request. And here I'm going to call it point ET. Just name uh, to identify your request. Um, once you do that, you can either enter points here. So, or if you have many points, many coordinates you are looking at, you can have a CSV file with a uh, list of latitude longitudes and years that is described here, or um, you can have, um, if you want um, um, an, an area, you will have to look at a, you can have to form a um, GeoJSON or JSON file, or have to have a vector file. So if you recall, we just uh, had looked at OpenET, um, and we focused on this gridded area in Kansas, and we saved those coordinates on clipboard. On Mac, if you press Command and V, or on Windows machine, if you click Control and right click, then uh, you will be able to pick those 
coordinates that you save on clipboard. And here are the four corner points of the rectangle that we uh, drew on the open ET portal. So I'm going to use these points uh, in EcoStress window, where here I'm going to enter all those points, latitude, comma, longitude, as shown here. And I've already done that. So let me go to this site uh, where I've already put in this data uh, coordinates. Here, let's, for example, have 2021, July 1st, and here we can have 2021, July 31st. So one month, um, here it shows you have four points that you put in here. You can zoom in and look at the points where they are. Um, here is the data selection. So let's say equal stress. And multiple options are there. We are interested in PT, JPL, EcoStress, Eagle for Transpiration. So click on that. That also has multiple options, multiple parameters. Um, as you can see, it has canopy, ET, this is ET daily total. This is what we will pick by plus. You can also have um, uncertainty that is um, ET from soil. Uh, but we are going to look at total ear of transpiration at 70 meter resolution from ISS to coast. Once you do that, you can submit this and you will get a message here. The point sample request was successfully submitted. Now you will receive an email when this data are ready. Or you can check, you go here on explore and here's the point ET that's pending for now. Once uh, if, if the data are available through this site, they are extracted, you will see it is done. Here it will say done. Once you see that done, you can click on this download arrow and it will download the file as CSV file. So what we're going to do is while we wait for these points to download, I'm going to uh, just show what I already have done. Uh, this was over California. I had picked four points. And uh, this has all the coordinates. And that file is already I have downloaded as CSV. So I'm going to look at this four points. What it shows here is latitude, longitude of those four points. These are the dates. As you can see, it's July 2021. Between 1st and 31st, there were 4th, 8th, 21st, and 28th, four overpass over this particular region or points that we picked. It gives you EcoStress orbit numbers, seen ID, uh, build ID, and um, orbit correction was done or not. And these are the evapotranspiration data. And they are available in watts per meter square, as we saw. So let's, um, once you have these, you can see at each point how much evapotranspiration was there. We can find average of this, which is already here. I've done that. And so that's the number uh, that is average. So what does that mean? It is average over four points and average over for this month. So it's actually watts per meter square, daily data, averaged over this month and averaged over these four points. And now you can take this ET in watts per meter square and convert it to a millimeter bar per day by using the factor that was shown in the, the demonstration and in the presentation. So basically, this allows you to save EcoStress data convert unit, uh, do some analysis. Uh, this is just for your information that this is how you can look at point data. Uh, we already saw last week how you can look at uh, area, 
and look at geotip images and how to analyze those. This we are doing, so if there is any particular field you are interested in, you can look at that and uh, enter the point and look at ET. Uh, if you have precipitation for that area, you can analyze that as well. And so uh, what you will do next is go through the exercise. Pretty much all the steps that we went through, you will go through. Um, we, you will have, we have half hour, we have some time. So what I'm going to do is stop sharing my screen and uh, show the exercise that you will be working on. And you can go through the steps and do the exercise on your own. There are questions at the end of each exercise that you can answer. And some of those uh, questions are also in your homework. So uh, here is where I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So you can uh, look at the uh, exercise is available from the meeting page that you can download. Uh, so you we have lab time or work through this basic exercise for next 30, 35 minutes or so. Uh, you can finish the exercise later on if it's not done. It's basically going through the same steps, but it allows you to navigate through the websites and look at the area of your interest. For EcoStress, um, we focused on the same uh, in, in the Western US, but if you're interested, you can also look at uh, other region from other countries um, if you are interested. Uh, so you can follow the steps in the exercise, but you can still choose the area of your interest. Uh, and work through that. So uh, what we're going to do is we'll have some quiet lab time. Uh, we'll be here if you have any questions. And um, just in about half hour, 35 minutes, we will start our question answer session as usual uh, before we uh, conclude today's webinar. Uh, so we'll just uh, take a few minutes. You can look at the exercise. Please download that and uh, you can start working on it. So in the handout section of, of this meeting, you will see ET underscore week three underscore exercise. It's a PDF document that you can uh, download and open. Uh, all the steps are given there. Basically going to the same steps that we did uh, in the demonstration, but this allows you to work with the data and pick your own region of interest. So while you are working on the exercise, please make sure uh, that you convert the eco-stress ET to millimeter per day. Um, that's one of your questions. And that way you will be able to see how but how how it compares with open ET data in the polygon that you chose. Um, and the reasons why they would or they wouldn't agree. And so we can talk about that later. So we're just about to start with the question and answer session. Uh, you can enter your questions in the QA box and uh, we'll try to answer them. Uh, if we cannot get to them, we'll uh, post the document online so you can see the answers. Before we start with that, here's just the information. Um, we have uh, uh, contact information as well as our training webpage where all the material is available. This is the RSET website where you can see upcoming trainings and other materials posted there too. Also, please check out our sister programs that is Develop and Surveyor. Uh, you can get more information about these capacity building programs now by going to these uh, links. And so with that, we'll start with question and answer session. Uh, what validation measures are made to check the remotely sensed ET against uh, ground-based observation? What approximate percentage of the covered area in open ET is validated? What were the main instrumentation network used to validate the ET? So uh, we'll provide the details uh, after checking every step, but as uh, was shown, there is a paper FluxNet data were used to validate uh, open ET data. Uh, what fraction, that wherever the 
FluxNet data are available. That's where they were validated. And in the presentation, there was a reference to that well, about the FluxNet uh, data, where the data are available. Um, he, they are available here in the US. Also internationally, they are available. So EcoStress data are also validated with some of the FluxNet data. And Gregory, I think, is uh, here online. If you have any information to add about EcoStress validation, please go ahead and do that. Okay. The next question is, if the latitude and longitude coordinates of the four points are provided, shouldn't the selection geometry be a quadrangle instead of a point? Yes, that is correct. Um, the whole idea was to just look at a few points. We Last week, we had detailed analysis from Gregory Halverson who showed um, how to pick an area and get the geotiff raster for that area and do analysis. Um, here, to quickly look at the values, we picked a few points and just checked the number out. So that's, and if, uh, if you're interested in a particular field and if you know the let lawn, this is the way to do it. You can just enter that let lawn and get the data. And uh, if you have any instruments you want to compare with, or if you have rain gauge or other weather station around where you want to use this data along with, uh, you can get the point data. So that's the nearest point so, uh, from your uh, let loan that you provide. So question three is, is it possible to download multiple files at once from a peers? Yes, uh, it is. Um, you can order multiple files. Uh, once the order is done and when you get the uh, uh, notification back, when you explore what's uh, done, what is completed, uh, when you click on that, if there are multiple files, you can uh, click on individual file to download, or you can download them all by using in zip file format. So it's possible, yes. What does PTJPL stand for? So that is Prisley Taylor uh, JPL, or Jet Propulsion Laboratory Algorithm. And here's the uh, reference given for the paper. Thank you, Sean. We, we, went, we saw that in the presentation also there is a link to uh, ATBD document for EcoStress specifically that you can go through that um, original PTJPL was using MODIS data uh, you can it, it's been uh, changed to use EcoStress ET data and so you can look at the ATBD document uh, to see that. Question five is what areas, countries, continents is the data available for? As we summarized, EcoStress ET um, is global. Uh, it's available um, everywhere. And Open ET is available uh, for the Western US. Why can I not select products under appears point ET data after I have chosen the date in 2021 in June as the presenter showed. I am stuck on that step. Um, not sure why you, you're not getting data. If you're getting any error, um, and if, if you can let us know, we can help with that. Uh, or if you can sh send your screenshot, maybe we can help. Well, if you follow the step, um, if you put the coordinates in that right hand side window, a latitude comma longitude, that's the format, and pick start and end date, then you should be able to get the data. I'm not sure why, what the problem might be. Uh, can you please let me know where let long is shown in the field map? It's in the URL on the top. In exercise one, part five, which year had maximum cumulative ET in? 
Is that correct? Or do you mean the largest month value in 2021? Yes. Yeah, so I, sorry if, if that that is true in 2021, which um, which year had maximum cumulative ET? So not in 2021. In general, which year uh, had um, most cumulative ET in December? It should be. So at the end of year, when you look at uh, which year is the one. So that say um, we need to change that in the in the text. Please, can you remind me where the crop type should be found in the OpenET browser? So if you click on the field, you will see where you see the um, graph. Crop type is given there. Um, if you click and you get this multi-year time series on top, it says crop type. Question 10 is, why does appears bring an image when you select area after submission when you download data? Um, not sure if I understand the question. What does, why does appear bring an image when you select area after submission when you download data? I'm not sure um, if if you are downloading a GeoTIFF image, it, it, you, you, I'm not sure exactly what the question is. If you can clarify when you download the data, what exactly do you get? Can we validate, question 11 is, can we validate our model ET with EcoStress data? You can compare it. Um, EcoStress data are validated with FluxNet where the data are available. So um, again, ATBD would have more information about that. And um, you, you can, one thing to do is you can see how different they are if they're not exactly matching. Uh, are there any biases and errors or you know, the systematic bias you can perhaps uh, attribute it to either model or both, EcoStress and both. But yes, I think you you can at least compare and see where your model, how 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 close your model is with EcoStress ET. Yeah. So, like Gregory Halverson, Gregory, you can unmute yourself. Um, what he's saying is that it wouldn't be a validation unless you're comparing directly to ground measurements. So it's more like comparing your data with EcoStress from your model, not validation. Validation. Yeah. So as for question ten, I, I guess as Gregory said here, and he showed last time that if you if you get area queries, you get an image. For points, you get just a table or uh, numbers for each point. So um, today's recording will be available um, in 48 hours for your view. The homework is due on 29th of June via Google Form, and you have the link on, on the website and in the presentation. So just to uh, uh, repeat what we talked about in the first week, um, evapotranspiration is the second largest component of the uh, hydrologic cycle when, when you see evaporation or evapotranspiration next to precipitation. So it's um, pretty uh, important. And you cannot, uh, it, it flux net is a point measurement, it's like on tower. Um, and so instruments, they cannot provide um, direct measurement of ET. It's, it's still derived um, based on eddy covariance. So 
Okay, question 12 is, how can I get the coordinates out from the clipboard using a Mac? Don't know where the clipboard is, but the image says the coordinates were saved. If you go on Mac, uh, press Command V, then uh, go open a document, say, and press Command V, then you will see the uh, coordinates. Question 13 is, is the average ET star, is this a, yes, this is the equation. So ET in watts per meter square uh, multiplied by, uh, it would be like 0 0.086 megajoules divided by 2.45 megajoules, yes. That's the equation, that's correct. Do you know about these kinds of initiatives in other places around the world, or is it just for the US? Um, as we talked about in, in session one, Open ET right now is for the Western US, but they are trying to expand it to the entire US. And then uh, initially, I think for Australia and Brazil, and as more in situ weather data available become available for other countries, they they may extend it there too. EcoStress, because it's on International Space Station, data comes from there. Um, it covers uh, global area, so EcoStress data are global. We just focused on the Western US for our case study of exercise, but you can go ahead and do the same steps. Um, from last week and today's um, exercises, you can look at other uh, regions. Okay. Next question is: Is there, if there is less availability of flux tower derived ET data, then how can model ET be validated? Any other solution than flux data? Um, for validation, you do need uh, flux data or, or you know ground-based validation uh, in a uh, ground-based observation so other than that what you can do is from different sources if you are getting ET data you can look at the spread compared to your model and try and understand the differences but I think for validation you do need um, su surface-based observation data um, question 16 is for open ET when we are looking for locations in Nebraska is it possible to search them directly um, you mean with latitude longitudes or I, I think you basically go by by the um, the portal you look at visually zoom in and pick the region uh, where can we find information on how the crop types in OpenET data were identified? So that comes from USDA. And if you go to OpenET page, that information is there. We will provide that in this document. Question 18, um, for agricultural yield prediction, could ET be estimated on GEE with Sentinel-2? So Sentinel-2, um, would have surface temperature, you can have surface temperature from Sentinel-2. So um, you can in principle, uh, if you have Sentinel-2 data, uh, but the algorithm you will have, you have to train for Sentinel-2. I don't think GEE has that uh, facility or, or script or um, app that can do that. But Sentinel-2 bands are, are pretty close to Landsat uh, bands, and you can use those to get surface temperature. And, and sorry, Amita, Sentinel doesn't have surface temperature, or, or at least Sentinel-2 doesn't have surface temperature. It's, it's, just, uh, it's just short wave multispectral. So you can get an EVI in albedo, but not surface temperature. Uh, question 19. 
This might be more of a science or research-based question rather than based on the session today. Can ET from water cycle be correlated to carbon cycle in any way? Any research articles would be much appreciated. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't remember on top of my head. I can search for those. But uh, correlation would be possible because they both depend on vegetation, uh, right? Well, carbon is related to amount of vegetation or an ET, of course, depends on that too. So um, it's possible, but uh, I, we will search for uh, some studies and see if we can find any. So um, Gregory Halverson says Sentinel-2 does not have surface temperature. No, but surf the bands that can, uh, can provide surface temperature, I think it has, um, if it doesn't have thermal IR, maybe not, but um, we'll, we'll check. But Gregory says, no, it doesn't have thermal data. So no, Sentinel-2 cannot be used. I stand correct. I think, uh, yes, uh, Sentinel-2, if there were thermal IR, you get higher resolution than surface temperature. That would be great. OK, so um, if there are no more questions, we really want to thank you for attending today's session and this webinar series. Today we conclude uh, this webinar series and you have homework to work on. We want to thank our uh, guest speakers, uh, Forrest Melton and Gregory Halverson. Uh, both uh, did wonderful job in, in, in providing information about open ET and EcoStress ET. You have their contact numbers as well as ours. So if you have any more questions, you can send us emails. And we also want to thank our entire RSET team. That's Jonathan O'Brien, Sarah Pashel, Sean McCartney, Selwyn hudson Odoy, uh, Brock Plevins, and Erica Podes. They all helped in organizing this webinar. So thanks, everyone. And thank you all for attending today's session. We will uh, try and find information about the questions that we could not answer today. Uh, and uh, all the material will be posted on our website in, in very soon.